I'm speaking with Dr. Barber at the International Stroke Conference. He just presented some data on the use of cannabis and stroke, something we don't often pair together. Doctor, why did you perform the study? Well, I'm a stroke neurologist and, and we had a patient come in, a woman in her 30s who'd had a stroke, didn't have any of the other vascular risk factors, but was smoking cannabis at the time of her stroke. And so we looked at it, we did a literature, literature search trying to see if other people had reported this and there were a few sporadic case reports. And so we determined to do a case control study and we went to our ethics committee and got permission to study 160 stroke patients aged 18 to 55, younger stroke patients. And the interesting thing about our study was that our ethics committee allowed us to test 160 non-stroke patients. People had come into hospital to the internal medicine service with non-stroke diagnoses who had given urine for other indications the urine was about to be thrown away, discarded, and our ethics committee allowed us to test that urine without the control participants' consent. Um, as a consequence, all we could know was their age, sex, and ethnicity, so we could match it to our stroke patients. And what did you find? Some dramatic... Things? So 160 stroke patients, 160 controls, 16% of our younger stroke patients had cannabis detected in their urine, which came as a surprise. So that's one in six, give or take versus only 8% of the control patients. So suggesting a doubling of the risk as a result of cannabis. That's the relative risk. We don't really know the absolute risk. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. If you are 18 or 20 or in your early 20s, the risk of having a stroke is tiny. And so a doubling of that risk still gives you a tiny risk. The average age of our stroke patients was 45. The risk of having a stroke at 45 is starting to increase and it's no longer a tiny risk, so doubling a modest risk is clinically significant. Given the movement now in uh, the United States to have medical marijuana in many states, as well as uh, legalizing it in uh, Washington and Colorado, how, how should physicians take this uh, data? Well, look, this is only an initial study. We need to back it up. One of the problems with our study is that we couldn't tease apart the relationship with tobacco, all but one of our patients smoke tobacco as well. And it's not surprising where I come from people smoke cannabis. If you smoke one substance you're going to smoke another. So we need to go and do more research to try and tease apart that relationship. But what we can say is that a lifestyle that includes cannabis is associated with an increased risk of stroke. And out there there's a perception that cannabis is a benign substance and it carries little risk. Um, and as you, as you said, Colorado, Washington State recently decriminalized recreational use of marijuana. And there's, they're not isolated states. There, there is this move around the world to loosen up the controls on cannabis. And that's up, for communi that's up to communities and societies to decide. But it's really important that those decisions are informed. And cannabis has potential adverse effects. And it's important that the, the community knows that. And we know that cannabis can cause lung disease, it can cause palpitations. It's associated with an increased risk of heart attacks. This research suggests that it may be associated with stroke. And so it's important that people realize that there are potentially adverse effects. But the take home message for physicians? The take home message for physicians, I'd say that younger stroke patients who come in, particularly if they don't have any other vascular risk factors, do a urine toxicology screen. Look, test them for cannabis and other, other illicit drugs. If you don't look for it, you're not going to find it. That's number one. And number two is just to sort of, when we're discussing the wider issue of decriminalizing marijuana, just to step back and just think, you know, this, is this a normal thing to do? Is it a natural thing to do? I don't have any moral position on, on it, but it's important that the community makes an informed choice uh, when they're deciding these things. So should physicians that are prescribing medical marijuana for backaches be discussing this data? That's a good, Physicians who are prescribing it to cancer patients to stimulate appetite, then that's not a problem. For back pain, I think it's important that the patients who are getting prescribed medical marijuana know that there are potential risks, yes. Particularly if they're older? Particularly if they're older, particularly if they smoke tobacco, particularly if they have other risks for heart disease and stroke.